I've been posting Instagram tips on my channel since 2019, and unfortunately for me, that means some of these tips did not age well. I saw Brock Johnson post this post on his Instagram, which inspired me to go back, watch my YouTube videos, and call myself out. Here are all of the tips I've given where I was wrong. What's up everyone, I'm Millie, I'm an influencer coach, and welcome back to my channel where I post videos every week teaching you the latest strategies and trends on social media to help you grow your personal brand as an influencer. As always, timestamps will be in the comments down below because I value your time and you already know why you're here, so let's get into it. Let's take this back to July 19th, 2020. Have a consistent aesthetic. Your feed should be cohesive. In that video, I'm talking about the importance of having to have an aesthetic Instagram account in order to grow on Instagram. At that time, in 2020, before Reels, I wasn't wrong. So at the time it made sense, but social media evolves, strategy evolves. As of right now, I still get this question a lot. Is it still relevant to have an aesthetic feed? And I think the word aesthetic is really up to interpretation. Some people define it differently. Some people are like, oh, my feed needs to be super cohesive. All the colors need to match. I need to plan out. It's going to be the checkerboard pattern and it's going to be only photo real, photo real. That's what I do. <laughs> So some people think aesthetic is like matching colors, all the same presets, all the same things. And then for other people, aesthetic just might mean clear, cohesive, easy to understand. So is this tip still relevant to this day? I don't think it's as relevant. You don't need to have photos that are always matching every single time you post. I think what's more important is the first impression of your feed. When somebody gets to your feed, is it clear who you are, what you do, who you do it for? If they took three seconds to glance at the layout of your feed, is it clear the value that you're providing? That clarity can be through an aesthetic way where all the colors are cohesive and it matches if that's something that you like to do. That's something I like to do just because it's my personal preference. I like to keep my brand colors cohesive, use the same filters on all of my reels so that all my reels look the same. That's just my personal preference. Or you could have, a more casual strategy like uh, earlier I've mentioned Brock. Brock, he doesn't have like a checkerboard pattern he follows like I do, and he's not using all the same colors all the time like I do, but when you go to his profile, there's still clarity and it's very obvious what he provides, the value he serves for his audience. In that same video, I said this. A really great strategy is joining Facebook groups with the community or niche that you want to be growing in. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about this one anymore. For me, my current strategy, I don't use this anymore. I don't even teach my students this anymore because if you wanna grow on Instagram, I feel like you spend your time on Instagram. Naturally, Instagram has the connection with Facebook where if you post a reel, you can post it to both Instagram and Facebook. So yeah, do that. But do you have to spend time in Facebook groups in order to grow on Instagram? No, you don't. If you're somebody who is looking to grow on Instagram right now, I do have this 10 page workbook. It's free downloadable that teaches you how to set up your Instagram strategy for success. This is the strategy that I used to gain 10,000 followers in one month. So if you're looking for a clear step-by-step -step strategy to set up your Instagram for success, definitely download this 10 page ebook that I'll link below. All right, August 12th, 2020, this is what I said. No matter what you're creating on Reels, always keep this in mind. Instagram has always been about aesthetic. So when you are making those Reels, make sure you're thinking Pinterest worthy visual meets TikTok quick content. Does that make sense? I feel like this was a thing like when Reels first came out because people were still trying to figure out how to keep their feeds matching, create the aesthetic feed. And that still works for some people. Great, keep it up. But I've noticed because TikTok is more of like a casual platform where influencers and creators of all kinds can blow up. That's kind of what Instagram is evolving to because people are recycling their content. They're turning their TikTok videos into Instagram reels. So a lot of the content is kind of casual more than super aesthetic. So you don't need this picture perfect Pinterest worthy video to blow up on Instagram. I don't know why I said that. I mean, on the flip side, you still should have, you know, good lighting. It would make sense to have good lighting, to have good composition. Is your face centered? The content can be super casual. So you could be like chilling, sitting in your car, doing a little selfie talk, 
but you know, don't be hiding in your closet all dark and no lighting. So no, it doesn't have to be picture perfect Pinterest, Instagram aesthetic. Just do the basics. Make sure your lighting's good. Make sure your face is centered, clearly speaking, capturing attention with a hook. If you need help with hooks, I have this downloadable. It's a PDF downloadable. Uh, 50 reels prompts to help you increase viewer retention rate, increase views. So I'll be sure to link that down below if that's helpful for you. There are two things that you need to understand before you even press that record button. First, reels are different than stories. So I understand what I'm trying to say here, like reels and stories, they're not the same. Posting to reels, Instagram has said they push reels to new eyes, new viewers, whereas your stories, there for your current audience. You don't have to convince anybody to follow you. So that still remains the same. It's most likely not going to be the same audience because Instagram has said reels are for new viewers. But that doesn't mean the content won't overlap because a lot of people are really into like the authenticity type of content. So for me, sometimes I answer a question on my stories because I do an open Q and A and I answer a question and I turn that story into a reel, hoping that it'll see new people and people will follow me for that reel. So the content does overlap and even reels can be super casual, just like stories. It really just depends on your goals, what niche you're in, the type of content you want to create, it can get confusing. And I think this is because with TikTok, the type of video over there is so casual and so everyday user, it's not picture perfect all the time. In that video, I said, Instagram's aesthetic focused, you have to make sure it's picture perfect with your reel. That's not necessarily true anymore. Your reels don't have to be picture perfect. You just need to make sure you're capturing attention in whatever way that makes sense for you and your audience. September 30th, 2020, in this video I said, how to create an eye-catching Instagram bio. What you wanna have in it is the city that you're currently located in. With your bio, location isn't necessary anymore. I know why I said that, because for influencers who maybe want brand collaborations, brands use certain filters and search functions on their end where they can search for influencers in a specific city. So if you have San Diego in your bio and they type in San Diego influencers or San Diego in their search tool, you will pop up. So I understand the logic behind that, but it's not as important of like where you're located. Like for me, I don't even have my location in my bio. So why am I telling other people to put it in their bio? So like I know why people would want it in their bio, even if you're like location based, like you service people in San Diego or you service people in Seattle, then duh, that makes sense to put your location. But for me, like I wanna reach as many people as possible, not location specific. So I don't have my location in my bio. It just doesn't matter. I, I wanna reach anyone and everyone who wants to be an influencer, not just San Diego aspiring influencers. October 16th, 2020. Wow, 2020 was just a great year to make really off content. <laughs> That's just because Reels came out and it changed everything, okay? So October 2020, this was the tip that I gave. Hashtags are a great way to be found on stories. If you saw my outdated Instagram tips or strategies video, this is one that I talked about that, and that is using hashtags and stories. Unless Instagram changes this, again, hashtags and stories don't matter anymore. You used to be able to go to a hashtag and see all of the stories that had that hashtag up, but now you don't even see that. You go to a hashtag, you don't see any stories that have that hashtag. So it doesn't even help increase reach. I don't understand the point of having hashtags in your stories anymore. Unfortunately, it's just not a thing. Maybe it's like a glitch on Instagram's end and they just haven't caught it yet because let's be honest, they have a lot of glitches. So maybe like it's supposed to help with reach, but as of right now, they're just pointless. And also like hiding tags and hiding hashtags. I heard that if you have your hashtags or you have your tags and you drag it off screen, they erase. It doesn't tag the person or it doesn't include the hashtags. So hiding them doesn't work anymore. If you want them to be less obvious, I would just like color dropper, pick a color that's like blending into the wall behind you, put that there if that's how you wanna hide all of your tags. But like. What's the point of hiding? I don't, 
I don't get it. I don't really use tags often. I don't use hashtags often. The only time I tag in my stories is if I'm tagging a specific person, but I'm never doing like 10 hashtags trying to increase reach in my stories. So it's just not needed anymore. Silly Millie. <laughs> January, 2021. This is what I said. Okay, so this is like the magical formula. You should be posting on your Instagram stories daily. You should be posting in feed posts three to five times a week. Instagram reels four to seven times a week. IGTV, live, and guides all once a week. Play that back, whatever you gotta do, write it down. In my how to grow on Instagram video, I've talked about this magical formula for how to grow on Instagram. And I think that's one of the reasons that video did really, really well because it said, hey, there is a magical formula. This is what it is. Stick to it. And people love that kind of ish. You know, they want the secret Krabby Patty formula. So if they see that, they're gonna eat that right up. And my intention wasn't to be misleading with that. It was like, I, I really thought that was a thing. There is no secret Krabby Patty formula. I'm gonna tell you why I included that. In 2020, I was on Clubhouse a lot and I heard somebody say on Clubhouse, I heard this from somebody at Instagram. Instagram says that you need to blah, 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 blah. And they said this magical formula. I wrote that formula down and I was like, oh my gosh, this is gold. Instagram said this, but I never confirmed the source. I never did my research to confirm, yes, this is what Instagram said. And looking back, I don't think there is anywhere where Instagram said, here is your magical formula. They do say like, in that video I explain, hey, this is kind of unrealistic. What you can do instead is this, focus on reels, stories. Like, you know, that, that was kind of the approach with that video. So I think what Instagram is pushing is reels. We, we know they're pushing short form video content. So how to grow? Reels, we all know that. But yeah, that was one where I'll take the hit. I was, I was wrong. August 18th, 2021, this is what I said. This method I'm about to show you doesn't necessarily stop people from stealing because stealers are gonna steal, but you can copyright your posts so that if someone does steal your content, you will have the proof of ownership and can ask them to take it down. Now, again, it is never my intention to mislead. I've learned a lot from having an educational YouTube channel. I am way more particular now with the content that I create where I link all of my resources in the descriptions now. I'm doing my research. It takes me three hours to script a video at least because I'm doing my research and making sure I'm not giving false information. And all of these examples in this video are, are examples of that where I could have taken the time to do more research, but I didn't because I was like, oh, I'm just gonna trust what people have to say. And that goes to show for anybody you're learning information from, whether it's myself or any coach, always do your own research and make sure, okay, this person said this. Do they have valid proof to back that up? I try to link all of my proof in descriptions. So that's something I want to get better at. And this video is just an example of that where I could have done more research before, before delivering all of the content in that video. And that's basically saying, you have to copyright your Instagram posts. If you don't copyright them, then then you can't, like people can steal your content, blah, 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 blah. But if you post something to Instagram, that is yours, original content, you created it, it's already copyrighted. The second you upload it to a platform, from my understanding, when I talked, I had somebody reach out to me, he's um, a lawyer, and he was like, actually, Millie, this video, you're wrong. And I was like, let's hop on a call. Can you educate me? Because I don't know where I'm wrong. Like, I don't get it. So we hopped on a call and he basically was like, if you create original content and you upload it to the internet, Instagram has that timestamp of like, you uploaded it on July 25th, 2022, 2021, whatever. And because it's yours, you can show proof that you created it. It's yours. It's already copyrighted in a way. You don't have to go that extra step to copyright your posts. If you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed, be sure to hug the subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss when I post my next videos. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. Follow your joy. Bye. Thank you.